First of all, let me say that I enjoy all the classic movie Tarzans, from Elmo Lincoln all the way up to Gordon Scott. 1932's Tarzan the Ape Man with the great Johnny Weissmuller is one of my favorite classic films. The New Adventures of Tarzan is pretty good too, for reasons of its own. This 12-part serial, released in 1935 by the Ashton Deerhold Expedition, came into being largely because author Edgar Rice Burroughs was unhappy with how movies depicted his fictional jungle man. Burroughs formed a partnership with independent producer Lee Ashton Deerholt, and the film unit embarked on an expedition to Guatemala to produce the serial. The plot concerns Tarzan's attempts to rescue his best friend who is being held by a tribe of savages and to recover a mysterious ancient idol worshipped by them that was stolen by a mercenary. Besides being covered with precious jewels, the idol also contains a formula for a powerful explosive. Olympic shot put champion Herman Bricks, later known as Bruce Bennett, was chosen for Tarzan and he does an excellent job of portraying the character Burroughs originally envisioned as the articulate English heir and ape man Lord Greystoke. Bricks cuts an impressive figure with a genuinely athletic physique and he handles himself very well in the action sequences. The supporting players are good, especially pretty Eula Holt as Tarzan's girl, Frank Baker as an archaeologist, and producer Ashton Deerholt himself as the villain. Each chapter opens with Bricks giving us his jungle cry, which, while totally unlike the famous Johnny Weissmuller version, is probably more like the wild, less fanciful yell described in Burroughs novels. Directed by Edward Cull, The New Adventures of Tarzan is greatly aided by the ambitious, that is by serial standards, location cinematography in Guatemala City, Antigua, the Mayan ruins in Tikal, and along the Rio Dulce River. Some exciting wild animal scenes were shot at the Selig Zoo in Los Angeles. The photogenic locations and rough-looking animal fights give the serial a pleasing, raw realism that is in many cases lacking in the more polished MGM Tarzan films of the period. On the other hand, there were also dangers and difficulties with the location shoot, which involved lugging heavy camera and sound equipment over mountains and through insect-infested jungles. The often inclement weather added further complications that caused lengthy delays in the production. At times, shooting in the tropics even compromised the quality of the soundtrack. The serial was trimmed and compiled into two feature versions. The first, simply entitled The New Adventures of Tarzan, was released in 1935, and Tarzan and the Green Goddess, which was released in 1938. The New Adventures of Tarzan is an absolute must-see for serial fans and anyone who is into the classic era Tarzan movies because of its faithfulness to Burroughs' creation and for its authentic atmosphere.